Oh, boogie right. man Ben coming round the band is boogie man Ben. Is boogie man Ben. Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, today's video is going to be recapping uh, my experience at Halloween 45, uh, the 45th anniversary convention for the Halloween franchise in Pasadena. It was held at the Pasadena Convention Center. This is the first time I've gone to a convention that's kind of far from where I live. Um, I'm in Northern California. This was in Southern California. It was about a five and a half hour drive uh, for me down to Los Angeles area. My wife and I went. We did what my friend John Russell would call a burn and turn. We pretty much drove down early Saturday uh, September 30th uh, we left at like four something in the morning like 4 45 almost five, five o'clock in the morning got down there right at about 11 30 um, they let uh, general admission uh, people in at 11 so we just missed uh, the opening for general admission VIPs were allowed in an hour earlier um, but we stayed until almost about, I'm going to say maybe three thirty, four o'clock. It was a really cool experience. Primarily the, the conventions that I go to are a sinister creature con, but primarily they're held at the Scottish Rite Center in Sacramento. Um, so I usually go to those and this was a whole different experience. This thing was in a giant convention center, um, uh, in a big exhibit hall. They had, uh, so many, many, uh, celebrities from the, uh, Halloween franchise, all the way from like Nick Castle, PJ Souls, Nancy Loomis, um, but also like Malcolm McDowell, uh, they had Adrian Barbeau, uh, Dick Warlock, uh, you had um, uh, Don Shanks, you had um, Chris Duran, Brad Lurie, James Jude Courtney, Tyler Maine. I mean, it was amazing how many people were there. And, uh, you know, I got to see some really good friends that I haven't seen in a while. My friend John Russell was there. Um, with uh, his friend Chris, who I've met on a couple occasions, and then Jacob. It was great to see them and say hi to them. Um, also, uh, my friend Raina, saw her real quickly, got to talk to her real briefly as we walked in, um, but met some new people, some really nice people that uh, really, really made my day bright. Um, I met Scott, uh, him and his wife, Beck. Uh, they were from Las Vegas. Scott has been watching my channel. So, hey, Scott, it was so great to meet you and your wife. And uh, he's a Salem's Lot fan, and he's planning to start his own YouTube channel, possibly. Not somebody that's on social media very much, but I gave him my contact information, so we're going to stay in touch. But uh, just a lovely guy, and we talked for quite a bit. also ran into a gentleman by the name of Mike, uh, him and his friend Kevin. Uh, Mike has done like a documentary that he asked me to watch. It's called Cinema Red. Um, I'm going to check that out. Uh, but ran into him as we were leaving the convention and we talked and he said he liked, uh, my content. Yeah, we talked for a while. Uh, very, very nice people. Ran into my friend Sammy, who I know from, uh, Instagram. He walked to me while I was in line to meet Dick Warlock. Um, got to meet his mother and his brother and, uh, was really nice getting to talk to them. And I got to see um, Pure Horror. A lot of people know her. She's really got a really big following here on Instagram. I didn't get to talk to her. She was busy like, you know, doing her thing and filming and stuff like that. So, but I got to see her, it was kind of cool because I've never seen, you know, like an Instagram celebrity at one of these things. So that was really cool. Um, was able to go up to Aaron Crawford who runs, uh, who owns and runs Cavity Colors and just tell him how much I appreciate his products. And, uh, you know, he was really nice and his crew was really nice and got to talk to them. Uh, ran into Joel Robinson, um, if people don't know who he is, is like he some of the work he's done like he did all of the covers for the new uh, 4k releases of the halloween franchise from scream factory um but i've always been a fan of his he i've had one of his uh posters for the longest time it's been in the horror zone for god going back to 2010 it's all the jason it's all the way from ari lehman's jason all the way up to Derek mirrors's jason same area of the horror zone ever since uh we pretty much moved in and i got it but yeah he i was walking around my wife was in the fright rags uh line to try to get an exclusive shirt that they had um at the booth there and i was just walking around looking at the different vendors and joel sort of flagged me down and we talked it was great talking to him and glad that he was doing well at the con and uh, his artwork's amazing uh, really just a great day seeing some familiar faces and actually just meeting some new friends and people that I didn't know were fans of this channel. Um, with regards to what I got signed, um, I didn't buy anything at the con. There was a lot of great stuff there. Um, 
specifically i was going to try to get that dr chalice uh NECA figure but of course it was gone by the time i got there i knew the vips were going to snatch those up and what sucks and what really makes me makes me pissed is that now those figures are going for like 700 bucks on ebay uh it just that's disgusting and it pisses me off um they only had a thousand of those they released 600 for the saturday show and i know they're putting 400 out for the sunday show i'm actually recording this on october 1st so today's uh, show sunday show um that I know that they had like 400, they're gone. And now people, you know, got, I think the limit was two per person, but it uh, sounds like maybe it wasn't, I don't know. Again, by the time I got to the Horrors Hollow Grounds uh, table, it, they were gone. And uh, I just said, well, you know, I do have the Ray Cameron figure from Night of the Creeps, and I'm glad I have that. And it's fine. If I could have snagged the Dr. Chalice figure, that was the one exclusive I really wanted. And the other one was the Fright Rag shirt uh, that they had, the exclusive ones, like skeleton versions of Lindsay, um, Tommy, and Lori with the jack-o'-lantern. And I was trying to get my wife one, and those, of course, then they all that they had was smalls by the time we got up to the table. So, yeah, the stuff just goes, and that's just expected. There was a ton of people there. Um, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I think the next time I... I I go to something, um, John Russell and I are talking about maybe going to the creepy con next year. Um, I think the next time I do this, I might fly <laughs> instead of drive. Uh, my wife and I doing that burn and turn really took a lot out of us, uh, driving down there, even though we took turns driving, it was just nuts. And, and with between, uh, trucks and, uh, people that just push the shit out of you and turn on their brights to get you out of their way. Uh, it was insane. It was like we were extras in a fast and furious movie. Um, but yeah, we had a good time. And again, like I said, I didn't buy anything. My wife got something. She got like a skirt, uh, from a designer that she really likes. Uh, one thing I do need to bring up is I did get to meet Stephanie. This is, uh, Christopher Nelson's girlfriend who does eternal craft. It's all handmade jewelry. Um, she gave me one of her cards and I am going to see if I can get something that my wife likes from her because I have seen her stuff. It is really nice. It is high end, uh, it all, but it, it's really well done. And uh, I eventually would like to get something for my wife from uh, this amazing lady and her amazing product. Um, and that being said, I did get to meet Chris Nelson. That was something that was kind of towards the end of my convention experience at uh, age 45. Uh, I knew I wanted to go up to him. I've met um, uh, Sean Clark yesterday, the 30th, was his birthday. So um, I did see him a couple times, just sort of kind of waved to him and said hi to him. <laughs> and he kind of gave me a... I was walking by him and I just said hey to him and, and he said, hey, good to see you. And he said, are you going around the bend? Like Boogeyman Ben going around the bend. It's like that 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 made me smile and uh, said goodbye to him kind of really quickly. Didn't get to meet Nay, uh, his uh, fiance. Yeah. And I hope he had a great birthday. And he does he just does amazing stuff for us horror fans. And him and Chris are really, I'm big fans of both of them. Chris was such a nice guy. Got to talk to him about just, you know, you know went up and said who i was and he was really cool and and everything and uh we talked about the exorcist that's coming out and i told him i'm really excited to see that and i don't give a shit what the hain is online i really am looking forward to that film and seeing something different and raising his makeup effects work and you know telling him how much i liked halloween ends and halloween kills and i actually had him sign my halloween kills uh blu-ray um so he just put hi ben chris nelson that was really cool. And like I said, this was the last person I met. Um, but uh, we had a really good time talking and uh, couldn't have been a nicer guy. And it was an honor meeting him. He's an Oscar winning makeup effects artist and uh, just a, a complete down to earth person. And I hope I get to cross paths with him again. Awesome guy. And I've met both Sean and him. So that just really makes me happy um, because they both mean a lot to me and they really kept my spirits up during the COVID pandemic. Without that show, Thing With Two Heads podcast, I really think... I would have had a harder time getting over my depression that I was going through. So I'm eternally grateful to them. Uh, the first person I met and uh, I had a budget, like I said, Chris Nelson was, it was 40 bucks to meet him, which was fine. Um, but I had a budget and I knew who I was going to meet. Uh, the main people I was going to meet was Stacy Nelkin, Anthony Michael Hall and uh, Dick Warlock. Um, and I got to meet all three of them. So Stacy was really easy to meet. There was only a couple of people ahead of me and that was sort of how I started my convention day, sort of being overwhelmed by everything. It was raining when we got there. So we kind of were drying off as we walked into the convention hall. And then I ran into my friend, Raina. My wife went to try to see if she could find that Dr. Chalice figure. 
And uh, we eventually were just trying to find, you know, where these people were that I wanted to meet. Ran into my friend Charles, that's someone else I, I meant to mention. Charles, I, I've gotten to know him pretty well and first crossed paths with him at the Sinister Creature Con in 2017 in Stockton. Um, but uh, was trying to find, you know, Stacy saw that there was like a bunch of lines and saw that the big line was for uh, Tom Atkins, but she was right situated right next to Tom Atkins. In between Tom Atkins and Tommy Lee Wallace, who I got to meet in 2021 20, uh, when I went to Sinister Creature Con in Roseville. But really wanted to meet Stacy. She couldn't have been sweeter. At first she thought I had said that I was from Tucson, but she said, oh, that's the person that was in front of you. And she actually asked me about what I did for a living. And I started talking to her about being in Lolita earlier this year and telling her about the devastation that that town faced, especially with uh, the factory that served as Silver Shamrock having, uh, you know, a lot of foundation problems and the roof collapsing and things like that. But we had a great conversation and she could have been a sweeter lady. And uh, I had her sign this poster, which I've had Tommy Lee Wallace and Tom Atkins, who I bought it from in 2017 sign. And we talked about what uh, to put on it. And she put, uh, which I think is awesome. It says, Ben, where do you want to sleep, Dr. Chalice? I just thought that was awesome. And uh, it's right there. I'll try to see if I can show it. There it is, without the glare. Uh, but what a lovely lady. Um, it was a great uh, pleasure meeting her. Uh, she's still gorgeous and uh, sweetheart. And um, we had a really nice conversation. It was a longer conversation than I thought we would have. And there was a line that was kind of building up after me. So, you know, I felt a little urged to like, you know, I didn't want people to have to wait too long, but also it was really nice that she just, uh, it felt like talking to an old friend. So, uh, what an honor to meet her lovely lady. Uh, was glad that I got to kick off my convention experience, uh, meeting her. So this is like, like, you see this blank space up here on the wall. That's where this poster typically goes. It's going to go back up there today. Now the next two people I met, um, first one I want to talk about, and this is thanks to my wife. And I felt really bad because it's, there was a panel where they had all of the Michael Myers. I believe that was at 12 o'clock. So a little bit after that, I'm going to say this was maybe about uh, one. Um, the line for Dick Warlock uh, started picking up. I got in it as fast as possible. And um, my wife was, you know, like uh, she was shopping. And she kept saying, I'll try to see where Anthony Michael Hall is. And... Um, Eventually, she did find where he was. He was actually in the same row with uh, Dick Warlock. For some reason, he didn't have a banner. So most of the people that were there had banners. You could see like clearly where they were sitting. He didn't have one for some reason, and she kept saying, oh, he is there. Um, but I was like, going, I don't want to get out of the, the line because the, the Dick Warlock line, I mean, Dick Warlock was... You know, it was tied with him and, and, and Anthony Michael Hall, two people that are on my bucket list, two of my favorite people of all time. Uh, Anthony Michael Hall is an icon to me. Uh, growing up with films like Vacation, Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club, Weird Science, Out of Bounds, Johnny B. Good, Edward Scissorhands, and then the Dead Zone branch of the Dead Zone series, um, and then Halloween Kills. I, I mean, he means a lot to me, and I was like, I have to meet him. So we were in the Dick Warlock line, and then all of a sudden, Dick Warlock was gone. And what I found out later is that he hadn't eaten. They had to sort of take a break for him to get some food. So we're standing in line, and I saw Anthony Michael Hall walk back to his table. And I said, go over there now. I'll stay here in the, Dick, in the line with Dick War for Dick Warlock. Go meet him. But I wanted her to meet him, too. But and it ended up, she just kept saying, go do it, go do it. And I ended up going to meet him. And um, she didn't get to go. And so just got out of line. She stayed there for me for the Dick Warlock line. I got out of line, walked over to where Anthony Michael Hall was. And there was only one person ahead of me. And the woman that was, you know, you know, I told her what I wanted to have him sign. I wanted to have him sign this. Now, back in 2004, him and John L. Adams, who played uh, Bruce Lewis on the show, they were touring, I believe it was Best Buy's. And they were all in the Los Angeles area, if I remember correctly, but they were signing these when they were released. And I had always wanted them to come up here to sign this. So I need to get uh, John Adams' uh, signature. I am friends with him on social media, awesome. and hopefully I can get to meet him and have him sign this. But um, this was the thing I had to have him sign. I kept going back and forth between Halloween Kills and this, and I was like, you gotta have him sign that. 
So told the woman I wanted him to sign this and said I also wanted a picture. So it was like 80 bucks to have all of that done. So that was pretty pricey. So he had his wife there with him. So his wife, Lucia, and their new baby, Michael Anthony Hall uh, II. Um, beautiful baby, beautiful family. He was so uh, invested in his kid. I felt really kind of awkward at first standing there, but he was really welcoming. Um, I don't know how big of a fan he is still of the dead zone. Uh, when I brought it up and he saw it, I couldn't tell if he was happy about it, but, you know, talked about Halloween kills and just how upset I was that he got killed in it. And he said he was upset about it too. And then we started talking about the fact that he and I have the same birthday. I was born April 14th of 74. He was born April 14th of 68. And he thought that was cool. He told his wife, hey, we have the same birthday and talked to him about his haircut and weird science and how as a kid, I just idolized him from the vacation movies and, you know, um, Breakfast Club and, and weird science. And I wanted my hair like his and I tried to cut my hair like his when I was a kid. And you got a kick out of that. And when we were going to take the picture, the woman that had taken my money and was kind of overseeing the people that were coming up. He said, oh, he's like, don't worry. He says, I'll take it. And he took my phone. He says, I have really long arms. And he took the picture with me. So it was a really personal photograph. I really enjoyed uh, meeting him. And um, again, it was a bucket list item to meet him. Um, I've idolized him for a long time and he couldn't have been a nicer person. And uh, meeting one of my heroes really meant a lot to me. And um, yeah, it was it was very surreal, um, very fun, and uh, like I said, he could have been nicer. He has a lovely family, and I couldn't help but wish him all the best, and he kept saying I was a gentleman, and that really made me feel good. I, and he just put on this, uh, to Ben, best wishes, Anthony Michael Hall. So, yeah, yeah. happy I have this sign. Dead Zone is a very important series to me, and I am going to be doing a series review or series like breakdown of each season. There was six seasons of this show and I did tell him I would always hope they would have done a wrap up to the show because it kind of just ended on a cliffhanger kind of in uh, season six. But uh, yeah, I do want to do a breakdown of each of the six seasons. I wanted to do it this year and I just haven't gotten around to it. I recorded the intro, but um, I'll probably do it maybe early uh, 2024. Uh, I really want to focus the rest of this year on my writing. So after that, I ran back to the um, Dick Warlock line and it, he still wasn't there. So my wife had been right, you know, just we were still waiting. And then eventually he came back two hours to meet him, which is probably the second longest line I've ever stood in to meet somebody. The first being um, uh, Corey Feldman at last year's Sinister Halloween Con. That was over two hours, but um, he didn't personalize anything. I guess it just kept the line going quicker. What an amazing experience sitting down next to Dick Warlock. And it was almost like sitting down with one of my uncles or my grandfather. Um, he was really funny and really personable. The first thing I said was he was my favorite Michael Myers. He's like, oh, I'm sure you say that. He, he mentioned like Chris Durand and uh, George Wilbur and all these other people that I, he's like, I'm sure you've said that to all of them. And I said, absolutely not. I told him that the, you know, when I was nine, my dad and I rented Halloween too. And it was always the, the first one that I experienced and it scared the heck out of me. And, um, when we sat down to take the picture, he made a comment about my ring and my wife took the picture and he's like, does he wear all that stuff all the time? And it was just really, really fun. And we started talking just about, you know, um, you know, uh, like our marriage. And he said he'd been, I believe he said 34 years with his wife. And I said, my wife and I are coming up on 20. And he said, you better be good to her and be good to that woman there. He said, I had him sign my steel book. He just put uh, Dick Warlock uh, H2 at the bottom. But I absolutely love this, and I love the experience of meeting him. Out of all the Michael Myers actors I've met, he is my favorite. Um, just felt like talking with an old friend. Again, very much like, uh, you know, with Stacey Nelkin and Anthony Michael Hall and uh, Chris Nelson. You know, it's like it was like meeting friends. And um, this movie means a lot, and I know that Dick Warlock is possibly going to retire from doing the convention circuit after this year. Just uh, an amazing person, and uh, really, really was worth the two-hour wait to meet him. I would have waited two more hours. Awesome guy, and uh, what an honor. And that is going to be it, fellow fiends, talking about Halloween 45 and just all of my experiences at the con. Um, yeah, it was a great day. The drive home was rough. Um, we're pretty worn out today. I am taking tomorrow off, that being Monday, um, October the 2nd. I am going to be going to see, to see Saw 10. I do plan to do a Saw 10 um, spooky screenings, um, so I will be doing that. 
probably will post Tuesday the 3rd. Um, I'm also, I have a Cavity Colors uh, shirt that's on its way that is Halloween 2 related. I was hoping it would arrive before the convention, but you know, I'm just grateful I got one of them and I uh, can't wait to showcase that one as well. Like I said, Halloween 2 is very important to me. Um, and, uh, the fact that I got to meet, uh, Dick Warlock really is, you know, just really means so much to me. So yeah, had a great time. I want to thank, uh, Horror Hound, Sean Clark, um, everybody that helped put on that show and made it what it was. Um, it was, it was an amazing experience and I got to meet some amazing people and, and reconnect with some other good friends of mine. And, uh, yeah, we had a great time. I was happy that my wife was there with me and, um, I hope everyone that went had a great time and I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Um, leave me some thoughts down in the comment section below if you went. Uh, also let me know what your favorite autograph was that I got. I really appreciate all of the support and followers. And so take it easy. Stay scared as always. Fiends, just want to say thank you again for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I typically do this once or twice a week with new content. Uh, I've been doing this for over 11 years and the horror genre is a passion of mine and it really means a lot to me that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support and I'll talk to you again later. Take it easy. Stay scared as always.